Today we've got exciting news from Hurdy Gruten. We've got Holland America releasing some itineraries for 2025, 2026. I've got a quick travel tip for you. We're also going to follow up a little bit with those passengers that were left behind on an African island that are sailing with Norwegian, bring you up to date with how everything is going with them and lots more. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. Today is Tuesday, it is April 2nd of 2023. We are really excited. As soon as I'm done here, we are off to the airport to fly to LA so that tomorrow we can embark on the beautiful Discovery Princess and begin our eclipse cruise. So pack your bags and come along with us. We are really excited about this. Don't forget that our live sail away from Los Angeles will be tomorrow evening at around 6 p.m. Eastern time. We're supposed to sail away at that time and and uh, we'll probably go live a little bit before that if things are going to schedule. So keep an eye out for us. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, make sure that you do subscribe. And if you click on that little bell next to the subscribe button, it will notify you. YouTube will notify you every time we put a video up, when we go live, all of those kind of things so that you can be sure to stay up to date. Now, here is some exciting news coming from Hurdy Gurton. If you are not familiar with Hurdy Gurton, they run cruises that go along the course of course of Norway. They also have amazing expedition ships that sail to beautiful places, remote areas of the world, and they have Northern Lights cruises or some of the cruises that they offer. And the really exciting news about this is that for the 2024 uh, into 2025 season, for the cruises that sail starting on September 20th of 2024 through March 31st of 2025, two things. First of all, they guarantee that you're going to see the Northern Lights. If you sail on one of those cruises that's at least 11 nights or longer, if you do not see the Northern Lights, meaning meaning that doesn't mean you didn't bother to go outside of your cabin and look at them. But if on the ship they do not have any sightings of the Northern Lights, you get to have a complimentary six-day southbound or seven-day northbound original Coastal Express classic voyage free of charge. So I think that they're pretty optimistic and the really cool thing, the second thing that goes along with this is for the very first time ever, a cruise line is... Um, partnering with um, a Northern Lights astronomer. He will be on board. His name is Tom Kurse, K-E-R-S-S. -S. I googled him and he is indeed very well renowned in the world of Northern Lights. And so he is going to be their official chief Aurora chaser, the Aurora Borealis there to do with the Northern Lights. And so this has now been put on my list of things to do. I don't know that we can do it 2024 into 2025, but I'm certainly going to look forward and hopefully get to do this sometime. We really had the best time on our Northern Lights uh, cruise that we did in October. We had an amazing time because of our group, the people that were with us, and it was just extra special and really cool because we were all excited to try to see the Northern Lights as well as every thing else that you get to see when you cruise uh, Nor uh, Norway and get to go so far north. Um, but it was just amazing. It was kind of an expedition, one of those epic voyages that even if you go there again, you will never repeat. So I wanted to share that with you and put Hurdy Gurton on your list of things to look at. Now, Holland America has released their 2025-2026 Caribbean season. There are some things that are really cool about what they are doing, and one of them is, is that Miami is going to become one of the home ports for Holland America. This is new. We haven't seen that before. And um, the other thing, well, and in addition to that, as we are used to seeing, Port Everglades there, Fort Lauderdale, will be the main home port for Holland America during this season. But it is kind of fun that you can cruise out of Miami and Holland America. I really, I enjoy the sail away out of Fort Lauderdale a lot. I like the one out of Miami even even more, I would say. Um, they're both so beautiful, but uh, Miami being on Holland America's list of places they sail from, I think is amazing. Now they are going to have all three of their Pinnacle class ships. They're bringing the Koningsdam back to sail there in that Caribbean season. And so um, here are some things to think about. All of Holland America's sailings for the Caribbean in that 2025, 2026 season are going to include a stop at Half Moon Key. That is Holland America's private island there 
really cool thing. They are going to have late evening departures, which really extends and changes how much you can do when you are somewhere in port for a day and you go into the evening. They are going to leave late from Puerto Rico, Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire. Not on all the itineraries, just some. So make sure that you look for what it is that you want. They are still, Holland America started this a, week, a while ago and they are continuing it. They are going to have cuisine onboard highlights for local flavors and it's going to include yellowtail snapper and plantains. I love plantains. Tell me in the comments if any of this is enticing you to want to try Holland America. Um, then also in December, they are going to run 10 sailings that... Um, run through the Caribbean on 7 to 14 day um, length of cruises. Why I think that is significant is December, when you get the very beginning of December, it's a good time to book a cruise from the standpoint of they're usually, well they are practically always more affordable during the beginning of December window than they are during um, like Thanksgiving time and later in the month when families start sailing together for the holidays. And so kind of think of where you want to go. The beginning of December is a beautiful time in the Caribbean. Um, I got to sail at the, um, in early December in uh, on the Celebrity Reflection in 2022, and it was really beautiful. I think it's been my favorite time to be there so far. Usually we are there in October and November, and it was beautiful in December. We've been there in January as well. Alrighty, next thing that I want to tell you, here's my tip for today. Um, like I said, we are going to be going to the airport here when we're done. And when I am home, I always wear my regular jewelry and I don't worry about it. And uh, But when I travel, I think about it. And so one thing that I do is I don't pack my very precious jewelry. I have um, like a gold bracelet I'll take with me, but things that are really special to me, I do not take because I don't want to accidentally lose them or I, and I don't want them to be stolen. A uh, really important thing that I think is really important for us to all think about is uh, I, I just wear this little band. It is actually gold, it's real gold, but it's just this thin little band. That's what I use for a wedding ring when I go and I leave uh, my diamonds at home. I don't take them anywhere with me and I'm always surprised. Um, I have been on cruises, even just on the Sun Princess where um, I think people, um, either they have great knockoffs, <laughs> which would be really fun, but I'll talk about that in a second but also um, I don't want to look like I'm worth robbing so that's why I'm not taking a great knockoff with me and it's why I don't take my real things because if we were walking around a city you know sometimes you stay longer at the end of your cruise or at the early um, you don't want to look like someone who is worth robbing if they looked at me, hopefully they would think they'll keep moving along to someone that looks like they've got um, something fancier. It would be better if no one would rob anyone, but we're not at that point right now. And so I just want you to think about what you take so um, that you make an informed choice. I'm not telling you what to do, but kind of think about that. I think it's important. Now, along with Holland America releasing their 2025 and 2026 um, season, I've been thinking a lot about the different ways to cruise different places. And one of the things that really struck me is, um, you know, I've been looking a lot at that March 2026 sailing that Princess has. It's like the 52 days round trip from Los Angeles. You get to go clear down to um, Australia and New Zealand on that voyage. You see a lot of the South Pacific. It's going to be extraordinary. You look at a lot of long voyages, um, even one direction, when Sydney to LA, Sydney to um, Seattle, and sometimes you might think, you know what, I'm never going to be able to do this. But I want us to start thinking outside of the box when we think of how we're going to do some things. And I am really trying hard to do this as well. So pitch in the comments with some ideas that you've got for thinking outside of the box to be able to get to go where you want to go, do the things that you want to do. One thing that really stood out for me is I looked, um, I always follow along with what John Heald says. He's the brand ambassador for Carnival and he posts updates every single day. Sometimes he'll answer people's questions. Sometimes he just talks about things. And he mentioned the other day that the Carnival Luminosa is going to be leaving from Brisbane, Australia on April 1st and it will arrive in Seattle on May 1st. And along that way are a lot of sea days as well as some amazing port stops. When I looked up just to see what the range was on that cruise, 
it was a lot more affordable than a lot of the other cruises that I have looked at that have similar itineraries. The Carnival Luminosa is a beautiful ship from everything I've seen. Um, I keep thinking I want to try her. Um, I think it would be fun to try. I don't know. Should I try her in Alaska this year? Just slide up if Gordon and I have a minute. I want to go on the Luminosa and the Virtuosa sometime. No, the Venezia. That's the other one. Um, because they came from Italy. They were Costa Cruz Line ships. Everyone talks about the food venues and how beautiful the decor is. So let me know what you think. But that's part of what I'm thinking about thinking outside the box. And I am sure that that sailing that runs from Brisbane to Seattle is a different kind of sailing than you are going to catch when you think of like a four day uh, cruise out of LA to Ensenada or some of the really short ones on Carnival that people think of just only as a party cruise. I really feel like the whole demographic, the whole um, situation is going to be really different. So let me know what you think. And please do let us know in the comments if you have been on a sailing like that, what you think about it, just everything. And put down below, like I said, other things that you think will help us all think outside of the box. And um, not, not only from a monetary standpoint, like as far as how much things cost, but just the approach to things and how um, we can do that a little bit better really quick update on those. Remember there were um, passengers, I believe that there were eight who were leaving um, late returning to their ship there in Africa. We've talked about that a lot in my heart. They are actually, these people are in my prayers. And um, so they um, were traveling. They started going to the next port that the ship would be at. And then the ship was not able to dock there because of weather. And so then they were going to need to meet the ship in Dakar, Senegal, which would be today, um, Tuesday, April 2nd. And that would be, you know, different from time here in the U.S., time there in Africa. But I looked and it looks like the ship has docked there. I have not seen news if the people were actually able to meet the ship there. So I really hope they are. It's a lot of traveling that would take them. Um, they were going to, they had to go um, to Gambia uh, for where they were hoping to meet the ship yesterday. And then they had to go to clearly Senegal, a whole nother country and everything that goes with that. So I am really anxiously awaiting updates with that. And um, along with that, um, I just wanted you to think about it. <laughs> think about this situation. It is really hard. In the comments, someone else um, noted that sometimes Norwegian does not add excursions until you're really pretty close to a cruise. And so my counsel to look at the excursions that are offered on um, the cruise that you book, I think it still stands because you can't wait until you're super close to a cruise, like a couple of months out, to see what the excursions are going to be. So that is something that, and you know, I appreciate people sharing their experiences because we all learn from that. And as I share experiences here, it doesn't mean I think anyone did anything wrong. It just really helps us to think about everything and then move forward with more information to make our choices. Then um, also a fun update. We've been talking about Baltimore. And um, if you're like me, I've been worrying. I've been worrying about the whole situation there, the people that work there and the livelihood of all of the people on the ships that need to come and go from the port there in Baltimore, the people that work there in the port. And I am happy to report that a tugboat was actually able to push out a fuel a barge through an alternate channel that they are doing as they are working. It's going yeah. to take them a while to remove the debris from the bridge as it fell when that container hit, ship hit it. And it's going to take a long time to rebuild a bridge there. So I think it's wonderful news that they have been able to open up one of the alternate channels. And it sounds like there maybe is going to be more than one alternate channel so that that um, traffic can get moving a little bit there again. So we'll look forward to more updates. I'm really excited to hear like I was telling you yesterday, if the Carnival Pride is going to be able to use Baltimore as their home port as expected. Well, I think we'll know that closer to when they're supposed to arrive there on April 21st. So um, that's what I've got for you today. Um, like I said, pack your bags, come with us on the Eclipse Cruise. I'm going to see how good the Wi-Fi is and go um, live here and there as we can. We'll see what it's like up on the um, up on the top of the top deck there of the Discovery Princess on Eclipse stay and see how everything's going and if we could go live and just uh, let you join in the fun for a few minutes we'll do that i really look forward to seeing you here again tomorrow and i'll be talking to you all again really soon you all take really good care god bless you love you bye, -bye.